Andro, my name is Anne Posada. I am Hikaria Apache from Dulce, New Mexico. My name is Justin Geem. I am from many different nations, but Blood Quantum says that I am 50% Navajo. Hence Jay, my name is Lumhi Miko. It means Eagle King. I am from the Seneca people of upstate New York, and I'm also Muscogee Creek from Oklahoma. Hola, me llamo Esme Olivia. My name is Esme Olivia. I come from um, occupied Tiwa lands. That's where I grew up. It's also known as Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yate, my name is Raven Bright. I come from the Navajo Nation, and I'm from Gallup, New Mexico. See yo. Alayun Eugene Pickett. I am of Cherokee and or Salagi, West African, French and Irish descent. My name is Diallo Johnson. I'm originally from Washington, D.C. My background is a blended mix of different cultures. Uh, my name is uh, Samsoji Sampson. I am a uh, Seneca in Muscogee Creek. My name is Olivia. I come from the Muscogee Creek Nation of Oklahoma, and I was raised in Central Texas in the Hill Country. My name is Rulon Tonkin, and I am the founding artistic director of Dancing Earth. I think Dancing Earth is the circle, the community that I always wanted to be a part of, and I was waiting for someone to make. <laughs> and then as a woman in uh, what was then the 20th century, I realized that that was my role. It actually was a, um, a major health battle that um, really took away what I had believed myself to be, which was a strong and healthy dancer. I had a professional dance career, but whenever I was um, you know, had some time off, I would be going to um, visit different uh, reservations, and there's always that sense of like, oh, what is it that you do? Okay, well, well, you can share that with the young people. One, two, three, four, and then we'll trace. The trees teach me how to root and reach at the same time. The water teaches me to flow and to fill and empty containers. I want this piece uh, to maybe inspire others to create something similar. Or something that Dancing Earth really has is the intention behind every movement. Every movement is telling a story. Nothing you're doing is, is um, just white noise. It's all gonna come down to what you're saying. Are you growing like a tree? Are you moving like a lizard? And all, which can also be transformative, inspiring people to And so movement better, is life, better, and dance is maybe the highest expression, or one of the highest expressions of movement. So when we're dancing, we're actually moving in and with the rhythms of life and with the earth. Let's go ahead and find that grounded, rooted set of our legs, but also representing that first growth. It, it we move through a space that allows us to feel what it's like to move like water, feel what the pain of the water would be like, and embody it through our sweat, through our tears, through everything that can come out by actually recognizing that we have brought about so much destruction on our planet, but we also have the opposite force. We can bring about healing. Squazi in Cherokee. In a way, I'd say Dancing Earth comes from my sense of reciprocity of everything I've received in this world, this life itself, um, to be able to give back something to um, first to Native communities, that's where we find our roots, and then um, grow strong in the middle, and then we have these branches and leaves that reach out into infinity. There's this idea of a circle, and I think that's how we connect so well to um, the earth, to I guess our past, our present, and our future. That is culture. Dance is connected to it, and dance is connected to the land. And there's no way about like separating that. All It's all there. It gives a safe place for us as Native peoples to share our culture and share the full breadth of knowledge that we hold as Indigenous people with one another in a way that keeps the knowledge safe sacred, but also creates a platform for it to be shared in an artistic way. And then we'll plant those hands on the ground, lean over, the top leg circles around. I call it indigenous contemporary dance, and what's significant about it is that, um, well first, it's bringing people into the circle. So uh, many of the dancers might not have had any studio training. A lot of those dances are, I'm gonna use the word sacred, meaning that they're protected, they're only for, certain tribal people to do on a certain spot of land at a certain time of the year. 
And in a way, what we do as contemporary dancers allows that to stay pure, not to be shared where it's not supposed to be shared or appropriated or borrowed. Um, so I'm actually protecting a lot of that. Out of the what is called traditional dance, there are also social dance forms like the powwow style of dance, which has um, some of it has roots to more sacred forms. Some of it are more social forms. And what um, we create is an intertribal circle. So there's intertribal cultural exchange that we learn from each other. Corn, beans, and squash. Contemporary views, it's given us a very dynamic platform to tell old traditions and stories without giving away our sacred ceremonies. So it's a, it's a way to, for people to acknowledge our existence and also an entry point for them to want to know more. In Seneca, Jikdeon, Jikdeon, bird. So we're gonna begin by simply lifting your left heel off the ground and then switching positions. Left, right. For me to be alive in this day and age where I can freely express myself and dance wherever I want, uh, this is to me like uh, the epitome of where I should be as far as uh, upholding my culture and carrying it on for the future generations. I see our dances as functional rituals for transformation. And it, it involves every aspect. Um, we have the food, the corn beans and squash was in the center of the circle. It involves what we eat and involves how we greet each other. It involves, you know, literally how we walk on the ground and um, who we acknowledge when we get to a different place um, to recognize the indigenous people of the land that we come to.